When God cursed the world in Genesis, one of the iconic symbols of this curse was thorns. That's in Genesis 3, verses 17 through 19. The difficulty of laboring for food and dealing with things like thorns were always to be a reminder of our separation from God because of sin. If you have ever worked with something that has thorns, like a lemon tree, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Yet the beauty of these early verses aren't fully grasped until the New Testament, when we see Christ literally take on the sins of the world by receiving a crown of thorns on his head after being flogged, sleep-deprived, abused, and mocked. The Romans also wrapped him with a scarlet robe, and some gospel accounts call it a purple robe. There's a significance here, too. Scarlet was always associated to sin throughout the Bible, because scarlet resembles blood. The Bible tells us that without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sin, because sin is so serious to God. This is in Hebrews 9, verse 22. Even when Adam and Eve sinned for the first time, God sacrificed an animal to cover both their physical and spiritual nakedness from the fall. Yet in Jesus' example with the robe, the nature of its color is a poetic and profound fulfillment of the words spoken in Genesis. Some argue that the differing accounts of the Gospels in this case are an example of the testimonies of the writers being unreliable. This is because some accounts say scarlet while others say purple for the color of the robe. The truth is that the original language and context of these reports add up to the same thing, which is that the robe was very old and worn out and had lost its original color due to fading and looked more purple than scarlet. After all, nobody would give someone doomed for crucifixion and torture a brand new robe, but rather something worn out and dirty. This now paints a profound picture of how Christ literally took on our sins as the once-for-all sacrifice for humanity. The robe's lackluster appearance is exactly in step with humanity's sin. It is old, tired, worn out, dirty, used, and abused. Sin leads to death, and our history shows nothing but the same old tired tricks of the devil that keep repeating themselves through each generation. As the book of Ecclesiastes says, there is nothing new under the sun. Ecclesiastes 1 verse 9. Nobody knows how long the thorns of Jesus' crown were, or even what the exact shape of it was, but we can bet that they were at least an inch long. Any length is too long for such a horrible experience, and yet Christ endured the unimaginable as they pressed that crown down into his temples and scalp. The words in Genesis spoken by God now become clear. All of this was a foreshadowing of the gospel and what he would endure on our behalf. God cursed the world with thorns so that we would understand the pain and separation sin causes only so that he could take those thorns upon himself and ultimately show his love by rescuing us from the consequences. In my sunny home of Arizona, these life lessons are very much on my mind when I take a walk around the neighborhood or I ride my bike. Of all the things that God made with thorns, perhaps the cactus is one of the most prolific. But did you know that cacti have some of the most beautiful flowers in all of creation? Their vibrant colors and intricate designs are truly unique, and often the most inconspicuous cacti have the most surprisingly beautiful flowers. What this reminds me is that regardless of our sin, there is always hope. Regardless of the pain and the separation we have caused between us and between God, the gospel shines bright like a beautiful flower. The Bible says that God uses the foolish things of the world to shame the wise which is in 1 Corinthians 1, verse 27. And certainly we see evidence of that in the humble cactus. Not in my life would I ever expect to see such beauty and brilliance emerge from a ball of thorns. And in the same way, Adam and Eve could have never imagined the beauty and brilliance that God would reveal because of their sin. <laughs>